Hello everybody, I'm in the Littlewood, also known as Martin, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are checking out Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So again, much like the previous videos that I've done uh, from the Windsor uh, officers for Nintendo, um, some of the games were allowed to be direct capture, as in like, you know, Elgato, usual video kind of quality, but some of them had to be over the shoulder to show that I am actually the person pressing the controls on it, um, and then you have to sort of record with a camera off of a monitor, so apologies about that, but um, I have to respect their decisions otherwise I get no gameplay footage and some is better than none so this game if you don't if you're not aware of it just yet it is basically a turn-based tactical RPG and when I first heard that I was like well I don't know if I'm into that I've never really been very uh, good or even really so much a fan of things like RTSs and turn-based games like things like XCOM or um, Starcraft and all that sort of stuff I know those are in two separate genres but that sort of like vibe and camera view and gameplay sort of like standpoint but I found that I actually really, really enjoyed this. I think, I don't know if it's because some of these earlier levels are obviously going to be slightly more simplistic, or if it's just simply an aesthetic thing. I don't know if it's just simply the visuals being the way that I liked to see them that made me love this, but I thought it was great. So we've got this weird little Roomba dude, uh, and basically he's our movement, not only between the different areas, but also during the combat as well. So you can obviously see the area where I can fire a shot right now at the enemy. We hit him for 30 damage, everything's groovy, and it's a one-hit kill. So you start off with uh, Rabid Luigi, which funnily enough, is the name of a YouTuber that I actually met at this at this uh, Nintendo event, which I thought was quite cool. So you can see at the minute, I've got a 0% chance of hitting that enemy. So I need to try and basically move myself somewhere else if I can. Or I can actually chip down the wall to try and make that a bit more of a possibility. Now, something that I didn't do initially is, you can see Mario just there. If I was to run over to him and, like, pop my marker on top of him, you can actually do a special movement where he actually launches you forward by quite a lot of blocks. Uh, and then you get your usual attack out the back end of that, which I thought was quite cool. So I think I actually employ that in the second fight that we go into. Um, and speaking of, like, the field and the movement and all that sort of stuff, Obviously, that Roomba leads you around when you're trying to place markers and attack enemies and things. Um, but I, I really, 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 really enjoyed the fact that it didn't feel like this was just going from one stage to another in terms of, like, you have a loading screen or there's a harsh cut. This game is, like, basically seamless, which I really like. So you actually walk between the various different stages and then the enemies appear, like, you know, sporadically and you actually go in different encounters. And I just thought that was so cool. Like, it just makes the world feel bloody massive. And it just makes it so satisfying to play through. I really, really enjoy myself with it. Um, and there are also a few different abilities that you can do with the movement. So uh, one of them that I think I just managed to clock when I'm going into this second stage with the jungle uh, was the baseball slide. I think I did it by chance and then I was like, okay, I'm going to use that more from now on. <laughs> but basically, if you run through an enemy, um, you actually do a baseball slide through them and do damage. And then whenever you land behind the platform you're going to stand on, you can then do damage additionally on top of that. Um, obviously, where I don't play these games very often, you can critique my uh, <laughs> my positioning and my combat choices to all hell, but I'm not going to be bothered. But I'm fairly certain that uh, Rabid Peach takes out this guy right in the face. Yeah, there he goes. And then we basically have uh, old Luigi over there goes in for an attack as well. I think this is actually where I clocked it. Oh, it wasn't. Interesting. So it might have been just afterwards as well. So one thing to note, actually, is those pipes over there, enemies can move through those, and I believe that you can as well. Ah, oh, yeah, look, so he must have done it to me. Right, it's coming back to me now. And then he shoots Mario, attacking two people at once. God damn. But no, so as well as that, um, also those fire blocks that you can see on the field right now, you'll see in a moment that I actually set myself on fire by accident. <laughs> and also that movement as well. I think it was the enemy doing it that, like, triggered me to learn about it. But yeah, basically, if you blow up one of these, then it... It, it ends badly. Everything sets on fire. But I didn't realise this. So I thought, oh, I'll be really cool by doing this. And then if I shoot the same enemy, then this might work. It was an awful idea. I should have tried to shoot him from the other side. Of, like, even just that one ledge. But I tried to do it when I was so close to it. So <laughs> we both get burned. And we end up running across the way to try and put ourselves out. It was, it was funny. I, I really, really enjoyed it. So what are we going to do here? We're going to go for this guy. Baseball slide. And I think I was going to try and get as close to this dude as possible. I think I was going to get around this ledge and then shoot him in the face. Because I should do a fair whack of damage on him. And then I can take out the other guy on the right. Yeah, so this is basically going to be a double kill from one Mario motion. 100% chance to land the attack. And he does the old 32. Hell yeah. And I think, do I use the motion here? 
I should really have gone through that pipe there, shouldn't I? I would have been right up in his grid if I'd done that. And then again, this is another one of those things where, like this game, for example, I didn't get to play before I got to record it. It was just, we only have this time window, jump yourself straight in there and crack on. So a lot of stuff that I might have like learned or seen in hindsight, um, I didn't actually get the first time around, which, which was just uh, a shame. And this is my first part here. I'm actually using the, uh, the mobility to get a little bit closer to that rabbit up there. I don't know if that increases my chances of hitting him anymore, because it's already 50%. Yeah, so that didn't actually improve anything, but still got a pretty solid hit on him, which is quite good. And I think with Luigi as well, I go again to Mario, and I wander outward from there. So, like, this is a game that I thought I wasn't going to touch. Like, I, Kath was raving about it, and I was like, oh, I don't really know. It's not my sort of thing, but I genuinely think I'm going to play this. I don't know if it'll be on YouTube. I'm thinking this might just be a nice, comfortable game to play on a live stream, where obviously there's a nice little sort of, like, pause and breath between each of the moves. You can really take it at your own pace, which I thought was quite cool. That was an extra animation, and I'm not entirely sure why, but that was cool. There you go, right in the chops. See you later, friend. And also as well, did I just notice that there might have been an icon just there on the exit of that pipe saying that you could only go through it one way? I wonder. And that's a nice little heal off the back of it as well. So one thing that I noticed in one of the later stages that I did was that uh, Peach actually has a group heal. So anybody that's within a certain radius of her actually has a heal that she can give to her, her various allies, which is quite good. Oh, the guy's called Beepo or Beep Zero. I'm going to call him Beepo because I think that's nicer. Um, that little bit of audio there in the background, if I do happen to use the raw recording for it, um, is the recorder that we use and not the actual gameplay making that staticky noise. I always need to put that out there because I don't want anyone to think that there's just some like random audio bugs in a game that's like relatively close to release. I promise you it's not. It's just our recorder is a little bit busted at times. So yeah, I thought this was quite cool as well. This little portion here where it still has a couple of mechanics a little like throwbacks to things from the regular Mario platformers. So I think from over here, I get myself a brand new type of blaster, which is quite nice. So I go ahead and get myself like a um, one that does a little bit more damage. The Piston Panic, that was the one. And I think actually when I go into equip it, there are actually three different weapons that I have available to me. So if you get a chance, pause the video. I think I actually took a little while to sort of like hover over each of them. So you can have a little look at them. So you've got Hell in the Shell, Lightning Shark, and then also the Piston Panic. I went for the Piston Panic just solely because it does the most damage. I don't know what the honey property was on the second weapon. I mean, I didn't have the currency to buy it. I was only three off. Um, um, but I never actually ended up buying anything inside of this level. But maybe the honey, like, slows their movement speed or something. That, that That's the only sort of, like, guess I can make on that one. And then now we start with this long old puzzle. When I say puzzle, the maze. I slowly learned after a while that if I just followed the coin trail, that was taking me in the right direction. I sussed it out after literally, like, one coin. Which is pretty surprising for me. I'm usually a bit dense in that regard. And then I think, actually, when we get out the other side of this, we go down to the left-hand corner, um, and we actually find a launcher to another area, um, but it actually ends up being uh, the exit to the level, as opposed to, like, continuing through it, or at least the exit to the demo. Yeah, look, see that there? So I thought that if I tried to persist going through there, that it would close the demo out, but it doesn't. It was just like a, a harsh wall. So then we go up towards this next area. So I think we hop in a little cannon, we go across the way, and we land in what's going to be our final encounter. Um, and I'll explain why I messed this up so badly in just a second, and why there's very likely going to be different gameplay footage going up um, for the last portion of this video. Look at them. <laughs> You've got to admire the dedication. They look really uncomfortable in there. So we've got a couple more coins before we get started with it. But basically, this next mission that we have to do, um, Kaf succeeded in and I failed him. Because I thought it was a case of me trying to overcome the odds and taking out these really massive enemies that whenever you hit them, they immediately retaliate, even when it's not their turn. Uh, turns out, you weren't supposed to kill everything. You were supposed to get to the end of the level. And I don't know why I never tried it. Of course, Toad's knocking him out in this level somewhere. I'm sure we're going to see from the real Luigi, the real Peach. I'm sure we're going to see from Baby Bowser, Bowser, Lackey 2. I'm sure everybody's going to be knocking him out inside of this game. Because the thing as well is I've not been given any additional information about the game, like beyond what I saw inside of the demo. So um, it'll be interesting to see like how much information they've managed to you know, keep to themselves, how like close the cards have been held to their chest. But um, here we go. Oh, he actually said re-chair at the very start. <laughs> I bet I was talking to someone when that kicked in. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I mean, it was glowing and bright and stuff, but I just never bothered. Oh, dear. 
Well, anyway, we can have a little look at some of the various different bits of combat. This is where I finally got out the, um, the sort of the combat calculator, I think it was called. Uh, where basically you can look at the various different enemies and see what kind of damage and um, persistence that they have. So this guy's got 60 melee damage, and whenever you hit one of those big dudes, um, he actually comes at you immediately and hits you, as long as you're within, like, you know, walking distance of him. And then the chain chomp is quite interesting. So the chain chomp is not on a post. You'll notice that pretty quickly, and I had as well, which is why I decided I was going to try and stand behind a lot of these different ledges, because I was fairly certain that he was going to just start going out and wrecking faces. Uh, I don't... Let's ignore that bit. I don't know what that part's all about. But, I mean, it's fine. It's an early version. Um, <laughs> so, basically, I was trying to keep away from him. We've got Hero Sight. So, basically, means that when I trigger it, you get, some you get some slight more damage. And I think that might be for Mario himself, as opposed to the other heroes. Because, obviously, he's the only one glowing right now. So, I think I stood myself out in the open here. Because I was worried that if I was wrapping the corner, that I might not hit him. Because the wall is so tall. Obviously, that would work for the other ones. But I didn't think it would for that one. So, I think I went ahead, blasted this guy in the face. And then I think I may have wasted my heal as well here. I think I was just so excited to have a heal ability. And I thought I had to use it. Um, I just did, never clocked at the time that if I press Y, it would switch over to the enemy turn. Eh? So I'm just a little bit dense in that regard. And then we got a little Luigi going out as well. I think I used the same motion to go ahead and give um, the old last rabbit a thwack in. So it'll be interesting to see here. So it was... Oh, it is 100% hit from there. Go figure. I mean, he's not dead just yet. He's got 15 health left at the moment. And then we've got immunity to super effects, whatever that means. I'm assuming some heroes have, like, special abilities. But out and about comes Chain Chomp. He's just going to start annihilating people. <laughs> yep. Oh, dear, oh, dear, friend. The mighty have fallen. So here we go. There are more enemies just here. So I don't know if I have to get all three allies into that space or if it's just the one. I would imagine it would be all three. But actually getting through this would be some going, wouldn't it? There's a lot of enemies between me and that wall. And what actually ends up happening as well is I end up having uh, two more of those smasher guys uh, spawning behind me. Oh, interesting. Maybe that was his special ability. Maybe when the enemy came to the line of sight, that happened. So obviously I saw those two enemies behind me pop up. So I ended up switching out to the Tacticam. And I think I ended up scanning them and realizing that they were going to be like some big guys. There were going to be more of those ones. So I started bricking it at this point. And uh, that's probably when I should have known that that was the game trying to forcibly move me up and through the field. But basically, the rest of this encounter happens in this small area, and I just go head to head to head with them. So I'll obviously commentate over the top of this part, and then towards the end, I'll um, switch out to Calf's footage, where he actually finished off the rest of the combat encounter. Um, but it's just quite nice just demonstrating the AoE effect and also the sheer damage that these guys can pull out. I mean, they have so much health, considering that, like, Luigi, Mario, and Peach all only do about 30 damage at a time anyway. You've really got to try and utilize those slides and the shots to try and get these guys even close to dying. Ooh, interesting. I got a bounce and a critical hit. So I wonder if the bounce is a percentage thing. I wonder if the bounce is, there's a certain percent chance that he's going to bounce away from you. I wonder. Or maybe it only happens on critical, uh, critical hits. I think here I was like, I definitely want to baseball slide him, but I'm also bricking it because there is a, uh, <laughs> because there's a chain chomp on the other side of that wall. I was like, do I try and go for the jump off of Mario? Maybe I should. But then that doesn't really get me any further away from the chain chomp that I'm currently at. So I think I decided I was just going to try and stand like over in this corner here. So I'm out of line of sight of one of the other smashers, but I might get on okay. And I can go for an attack here, but the problem is, is when I do, he would normally come to get me, but... I think we down him. So there you go. That's one of the big guys down the ground smashes. I think the chain chomp slowly but surely destroys these walls. Yeah, and he does additional damage at the same time. If I remember correctly as well, I think the chain chomp goes to the top of the field and actually takes out an enemy on my behalf as well. So the chain chomp is not on their side by any means. The chain chomp is a very um, sort of like, you know, third party to all of this. It's just attacking anything that it has even remotely close to it. So I guess a way of winning this would be to lure the enemies over towards you um, and get the chain chomp in line of sight for them to get done in. That's 100% hit there. Yeah, ouch. And then from here, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And I thought, do I try and put distance between myself and the ground smashes? And I thought there's no point because they seem to be able to run pretty far. So I'm not sure there's going to be any way of getting away from them where if I shoot them... They're not going to uh, that, that they would always retaliate. So at this point, I think I already knew it was a lost cause. So I'm just like, nah, you know what? 
I'm just going to run through you and get some damage done on you. What am I going for there? Did I not decide to run through him there? How strange. There you go. Yeah, go through him. There we go. Now I decide to wrap it around the corner. There you go. Nice little baseball slide. And then Rabbit Peach is out of there. And then when I fire from here, it can, it can really cover some distance. I think it still comes to get me. Yeah, look at that. It can get so close to me. That's insane, isn't it? Completely flattened as well. And basically, when you get to uh, an enemy being downed, I don't know if there's a way of recovering them, but basically you get sort of like stars and spinning lines above your head um, as the various characters. And obviously, when all three characters go down, that's when the mission is failed and you've got to give it another try, which during the course of uh, the time spent here, I wasn't able to get because this was basically all the time that I had to play uh, <laughs> to play Kingdom Battle. So this is all you're going to get from me. And here it comes. The old smash. Damn. What I can say as well is this game runs smooth as butter and it really pops on a screen. Like the vibrancy of this game. You can probably tell just from the video alone, even when YouTube compresses it down, just how bold those greens are. Uh, not only the dark ones, but even the lighter shades as well on the thin grass. It was just so, so nice to look at. Like I, I, I'm still just really, really pleasantly surprised by this game. I really didn't think I was going to be into it. So here we go. I think the chain chomp goes for this guy here. Around the corner and nom. One hit kill on those guys. Which is good. So in fairness, I didn't do that badly. I think I have two ground smashes left. And one regular dude. And then after that point, I would have figured out what to do. Had Peach not gone down there. <laughs> I think actually that next turn, Peach was actually due um, an ability to do a heal on us. So I could potentially have saved myself and Luigi. But then it was game over. So that was a shame. But anyway, that is a little look at Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. If I can get some gameplay footage from Kaf, I will add it in beginning now. And if not, I'll see you all later on. But enjoy the last little bit, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.